This is the world's newest cruise ship, the Carnival Jubilee. Launched in December of 2023, it is the third ship in Carnival's XL or Excellence Class series, and it's also currently the largest ship within their entire fleet. It cost $1 billion to build, holds 6,300 passengers at full capacity, 1,700 crew on board, 18 decks or floors, and it has a roller coaster on board. Now, I've just concluded a cruise during this ship's maiden or inaugural voyage. As usual, when I sail with Carnival, for the the most part I have a great time it's also a very beautiful ship however during this cruise I couldn't get out of the back of my mind that something was missing that I'm going to chop up as a potentially big missed opportunity that I will explain in this video I will also be going over my entire cruise experience from top to bottom which you should definitely stick around for because some things are guaranteed to surprise you and will probably piss off some of the very important fun people the carnival loyalists out there ranging from the pricing entertainment and even even cuisine, yes, the food, which I ate a lot of while on board, probably gained about five pounds. However, I now have to lose all of that weight, which is why I am very happy and proud to announce that today's video sponsor is Factor. Factor is a subscription-based meal delivery service that provides delicious and dietitian designed meals. As many of you know, I'm always on the go, traveling to some interesting and exotic far-off land on this giant spinning rock that we call Earth. Whether it be a quick booze cruise from Miami over to the Bahamas or an expedition of a lifetime to Alaska or Antarctica. The food on a lot of the cruise ships that I sail on or destinations that I visit may be pretty good most of the time. However, they aren't exactly the greatest for the body. Even when I'm here at home, I'm creating videos for you fine folk to enjoy, which can be easier said than done because yes, life does get in the way. On top of that, I'm working out and training very aggressively when it comes to my break dancing for shows and competitions. So that does mean I always need to be in tip top shape. Factoring in everything that makes up my life and business, it would be an understanding statement to say that I'm a little busy. This is why Factor fits into my lifestyle so well. Since my meals are delivered directly to me, this means no inconvenient trip to the grocery store, no wasting time hunting for the food that I want because we all know we get a little sidetracked at the grocery store, no waiting in line, no cooking my food, and the best part is there's no dirty dishes because nobody likes to wash dishes. Unless you're weird. My meal for today is a personal favorite, sun-dried tomato chicken with zucchini noodles. I also had a 100% plant-based strawberry smoothie after my workout this afternoon. In order to heat up your factor meal, just take off the top cover, revealing the plastic film. From there, you poke holes into the plastic, put it in the microwave for just two minutes. After that, it's ready to eat. And mm, 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 is it good? Choose from over 34 nutritious, delicious, flavor-packed, fresh, never frozen meals. They even have a gourmet plus option with premium ingredients like broccolini, leeks, truffle butter, and asparagus. By the way, did I mention that Factor is extremely flexible when it comes to orders? You can adjust your order size to fit your personal needs. Go to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SHIPLIFE50 for 50% off your first Factor box. Once again, Go to factor75.com or click the link below and use code SHIPLIFE50 for 50% off your first factor box. Right out of the gate, my journey would already be interesting as I will be taking my first cruise ever out of the Lone Star State of Texas. I was very excited. Specifically, I will be sailing out of Galveston, Texas. However, it is important to know that one cannot just simply fly into Galveston. The airport's too small. Instead, you gotta fly into Houston. However, unfortunately, unbeknownst to me, there are two airports to fly into over in Houston. Houston. There's Intercontinental and there is Hobby. Intercontinental will cause you to have a longer commute, about an hour and some change, hour 20, hour and 30 minutes, factoring in the traffic, of course. Hobby will cut down the time by maybe half an hour, so it'll be about a 45 minute commute over to Galveston. After I got over there, I did tip the Uber driver greatly because it was a very long journey, and Galveston, in and of itself, was a very small town vibe kind of place, at least the island of Galveston where the port was, and just like that, I was ready to start my cruise. On the first day of my cruise or embarkation day, it would only take me less than five minutes to get over to the port as my hotel was about a mile away. Once I got to the port of Galveston, it's a very small port, so you can see the ship that you're sailing on very easily. It's easy to navigate over to that specific area. There you can see the Carnival Jubilee in all of its glory, branding the Texas star in the front of it. Now, one thing I had heard originally about the port of Galveston is that even though it is a tiny port, it's very difficult 
difficult to navigate around there. But I saw none of that. I had heard there had been a little bit of confusion and clusters at the beginning early in the morning, but by the time I got there at noon, things were perfectly fine. Going into the terminal, things were as smooth as butter, and I got on board the Carnival Jubilee in about five minutes or so. By the way, just FYI, there were two to three canine units over at the terminal sniffing around, so a word of advice, don't bring your contraband on board. Well, you know what, I don't care. You can try, but if you get caught, well, you know, it is what it is. You know what happens. Once on board, I was, of course, greeted by the very excited Carnival staff, and the first thing I did was go to my room to check out my interior cabin. Now, as far as the cost, I would pay just over $3,100 for an interior cabin. This would include the port taxes and fees, as well as the gratuities or tips for a seven day sailing out of Galveston, Texas over to the Caribbean with three calls or port stops. As far as the room, I will say that it was nice for an interior cabin, very functional. There was a little button in the middle of the bed. I don't know why they designed this model and they want to make it convenient, I guess, for people to turn on the lights and turn them off. However, for a lot of people that I've heard, myself included, I do accidentally turn those lights on, whether it be while I'm sleeping or while I'm tossing and turning. And it's just an inconvenient spot. But like I said the room did the job as far as the bathroom maybe it was just me but it did seem like compared to the sister ships of this class celebration in Mardi Gras the bathroom was just a little bit more snug a little bit more tighter inside of the room was also a gift signature Jubilee cowboy hats all in respect to the great state of Texas, which I thought was a really nice touch. I'm wearing one here right now. I would also originally pay $175 for the premium Wi-Fi, but no shame in saying that I did reach out to Carnival prior to the cruise, and the second day of the cruise, they would then give me a voucher for free premium Wi-Fi. You know what they say, closed mouths don't get fed around here. You guys should probably try it sometime. So that means I got my premium Wi-Fi comp for the entirety of the cruise. However, there would be some problems with it later on, which I'll explain in the video. After I left my cabin, I decided to explore the brand new Carnival Jubilee. And I have to be honest, the cruise nerd in me and the businessman in me was very disappointed. Now, hear me out. It is a very beautiful ship, just like its sisters, the Celebration and Mardi Gras. It has the Serenity Deck, Shaq's Big Chicken, the Bolt Roller Coaster, all of the fixings that make that ship so great. However, what you have to understand about the Carnival Jubilee is that, yes, in the front of the ship, it is branding the Texas Star, and it's supposed to be dedicated to Texas. I just feel like when it comes to this ship, Carnival missed the mark and they've kind of lost their way of what made them so great, whether it be from the 90s up until earlier this year. If you guys remember the Carnival of Venezia, which debuted in New York earlier this year, I was on the inaugural sailing, it is dedicated to the Italian culture and specifically Venice. As soon as you board the ship, you can already see via all of the architecture and the structure and design of the ship, you can just see it everywhere you go. It's a very cool concept. You go back to the 90s, you look at the Carnival Conquest, it was dedicated to New Orleans and somewhat of the French culture. As soon as you get on board and around the ship, you can kind of just feel the vibe and you can see it and it makes the ship just very unique. This specific ship didn't have any of that. They dedicated it to Texas. However, if you look on, let's say, the Carnival Celebration, you know the area where the pizza is? Over on the Celebration, it's called 820 Biscayne, which is dedicated to somewhat of Miami. The pizza place is even called the Miami Slice. On the Jubilee, what you'll see is the shores, which is supposed to be, I guess, be like a, a, a beach area. They could have done anything with it. They could have called it the saloon, the roundup, the giddy up, but instead they decided to go the beach way, which is very stereotypical to like a vacation, especially a cruise. I get it. We're going to islands and beaches. They have beaches in Texas, but I feel like when it comes to the design and the paintings, they could have done more with it because from a business perspective, in my personal opinion, with the commute over to Galveston from Houston, and with the exception of people that are maybe living in Texas, I personally don't see why. I would want to go all the way to Texas to board the Carnival Jubilee when even though I do live in Florida even if I lived anywhere else like in New York or Seattle I would just fly into Miami and go on the celebration or go to Orlando and go to Port Canaveral for a similar if not more or less the same experience. The events and entertainment had an opportunity to contribute and make the experience on the Carnival Jubilee truly unique but it fell short. Unfortunately right out of the gate you have the sail away party which is one of my 
my favorite events on any carnival cruise. I do believe that nobody has a sail away party like carnival, but in my opinion, it just kind of seemed unprepared and a little rushed. There was some country music, but other than that, it was kind of like, well, we don't really know what we're doing, so we're just going to kind of just do whatever and try to have some fun with the people, do the typical line dance and nothing else, and after that, just tell everybody to go off and have fun. When it came to the shows, it was a missed opportunity in my opinion. You see, Carnival has a giant entertainment facility over in Miami. They've got studios, and they have a ton of shows they can pick from, and they can also create a new show if they wanted to, dedicated to Texas, or maybe even like the Mexican culture, because there is a big Mexican culture over in Texas as well. But no, the shows that they have as far as the production shows was a show called Future Husband. It was not good at all. It started out pretty cool with a guy getting married, a little sing-along type deal. However, it looked like the choreographer midway through just kind of just said, you know what, I don't know what else I'm going to do, so we're going to bring up a bunch of trending dances from 2009 and 2010. You remember that Harlem Shake thing where everybody freezes and then they do stuff? They brought that in. They had another show that was kind of like a Halloween themed show. It was cool, but in my opinion, they could have did something that dedicated more to the ship and what it represented. That's just my personal opinion. As far as the overall vibe, there wasn't much going on. There was a couple, I guess, country singers that were kind of hanging around there, but other than that, it didn't really carry over the vibe over in that particular area. By the way, do keep in mind when it comes to the events and entertainment that, yes, there were a lot of people that I talked to because many of you know I'm a very social person. I intentionally go out of my way on board cruise ships to kind of get some statements and, of course, some critiques and views of the entire experience. Many people agree with me on the entertainment. However, there were a lot of people that naturally did enjoy the entertainment on board. I am a little bit critical when it comes to the entertainment because I am a former entertainer. I was a dancer for Carnival Norwegian. I did some rehearsals with Virgin voyages as well. I worked in theme parks. I've worked for a lot of entertainment companies. So naturally and unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you see it, I do see things with a different lens. Now, one thing that did bother me, and I've seen this on other ships, not just Carnival, with Royal Caribbean, like Wonder of the Seas as well, is when you are presented with a show via rehearsals that everybody can view. It's right smack dab in your face. However, as a person that paid top dollar to go on the inaugural sailing, you won't get to see. It's one of those situations where they had some equipment or moving parts, which I understand there's choreography and all this stuff that needs to be figured out that wasn't ready, so they have to finish repairing it on the ship. But for me, it's kind of just tasteful in a way. It's like a slap in the face to the guests to say, hey, look at this show here going on in Grand Central. However, you won't be able to see it because you decided to come on the first one. You should have waited to the second or third cruise. That's just something I don't like to see. However, I understand it is just somewhat part of the game, but I do wish the cruise lines would work out and not rush these launches if every single element that they have prepared is not ready. Lastly, I do want to say, of course, this is no disrespect in any way to any of the entertainers on board. They're all very talented. Some of them are good friends of mine. And the Christmas events that they did have there for this sailing were overall pretty cool. The nightlife overall started kind of slow, but it did pick up very quickly. They had the comedy shows, they had the PG shows over in the Limelight Lounge, the 18 and up adult shows over in the Punch Liner. They had the piano. They had a lot of events going on that kept everybody satisfied during the evening hours. However, one bad that thing I will say is that Carnival really needs to step up their enforcement of miners running around at the late hours. You see, Carnival technically has a 1 a.m. curfew for anybody that is under the age of 18. On this particular cruise, because do keep in mind, it was a Christmas-like sailing, there were over 2,500 kids on board. And even when it came to 2, 3 in the morning, these kids were still running amok all over the place. And I would say the rule just simply wasn't being enforced. Of course, during the evening hours, there were plenty of things to do for all ages. We had the 80s party, the white hot white party and from my experience normally they would have that in the serenity deck but do keep in mind this ship was at full capacity 6300 people on board and a lot of kids so they decided to do it over on the Lido deck if you want to hang out in the pool area the pool on the Lido deck was open until 10 p.m the pool in the back or after the ship was open until midnight during the day of course you got your bingo there was deal or no deal going on mini golf the boat roller coaster there was no shortage of things to keep everybody entertained the events overall 
overall were not bad for the specific sailing. Overall, I would say there were a lot of pros and cons, just like really any experience. The Wi-Fi would cut out a lot during the cruise to the point to where you, if you were on the app, for example, booking a reservation for a dining option, which the app was glitching in and of itself, you have to get out of the Wi-Fi and sign back in, which became a very annoying process. When it came to the food, the food was delicious as always. I will say that since the ship was fully booked, it was packed, 6,300 people on board, it was somewhat difficult to get a reservation for a dining option, and you kind of had to do it at the beginning of the cruise, otherwise you could go over to any of the screens that were displayed all around the ship and check out the wait times, which I thought was a convenient option, and since I was sailing alone, which, by the way, I don't know if I'll ever do that for a, a solo cruise during Christmas time, again, very, very lonely, but thankfully I met a lot of subscribers, met a lot of cool people, and, well, they made it very memorable, so if you guys are watching, thank you for that, by the way, but I would just say that overall for the experience, it was still pretty good given the situations and I want to say you want to call it negatives or any of the critiques that I brought up in this video. I would also argue on top of booking all of your dining reservations and experiences early during the cruise, whenever you have an event like a comedy show, the venues tend to be pretty small on board the ship, whether it be at the piano bar, limelight lounge, or the punchliner. So my advice, if it's not in the theater where they might have a variety comedy show, get there as early as possible. That way you can get the best seat possible. As far as the ports, it was good, very standard, and I want to say basic for Carnival. We went to Roatan, Costamaya. Mexico and Cosmo. Cosmo is my favorite port. And we just had an overall good experience. Now, as they say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, right? Well, the disembarkation or conclusion of the cruise back over in Galveston was an absolute train wreck. I know a lot of people say the Galveston port is bad. I didn't experience it on the first day. However, getting out, it took hours. It just seemed like the terminal was not ready at all for 6,300 people to be disembarking the ship, other people, potentially 6,300 more people to be arriving to board the ship, as well as any other ship that just happened to be in port that day. It was a giant mess, and I do believe that the port of Galveston definitely needs to organize a little bit better, and since it is a smallerish port, they should be able to streamline that whole area no problem, but I guess we'll see. In conclusion, great time, thank you Carnival. However, I do believe that because of this experience and many others, I've done a lot of inaugural and maiden voyages ranging from the Carnival Mardi Gras, Carnival Celebration, Virgin Voyages Resilient Lady, Scarlet Lady, MSC Seascape, Wonder of the Seas, I don't really like doing the inaugurals anymore. It sounds nice for business. I go into the cruise ship tours and whatnot, and they can be viewed for years to come as long as the ships continue to be in operation. You get to meet all the cool people and marketing. But when things are not ready and it's just kind of like a headache trying to figure all of it out, it has become a little much for me. As far as selling from Galveston, I don't really see the appeal for me personally as somebody that lives in Florida. You got to think I have Tampa. I live right down the street from the Tampa port. You got Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm Beach. Jacksonville, Port Canaveral. If I had to choose to sail of Florida versus sailing out of Galveston, I would choose Florida every single time, more so for the convenience. And even if I didn't live in Florida, personally, I would still sail out of a Miami if I could. But that's what I got for this review. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. I know in some areas I was a little harsh, but it does kind of have to be this way because if somebody doesn't talk about it, well, things aren't just going to get fixed. Now, are they? I appreciate you guys. Subscribe if you haven't already. I have more videos coming up and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.